welcome everybody and I hope you're going to enjoy what I have to greetings greetings Moyo right off we go we're going straight to sharing a screen and my presentation will be very concise but we will get to the point and know exactly what we're going to share here so firstly I want to share my presentation with you And the first slide is uh, probably the longest one. So what I am is a Spooky2 affiliate and online software trainer for Spooky2. And I train people globally all the way, gosh, from New Zealand, all the way to Russia, London, you name it, Panama, uh, Mexico, London, I've got people all over the US and they are learning so much about their equipment. So basically, I, as you can see, I'm based in South Africa. I'm a yoga teacher. Um, I've instructed for many years and since COVID and also having had COVID, uh, which was quite um, not severe, but it was quite a wake up call. I've moved to full time online one-to-one -one instruction of Spooky2 software. And I, I use Zoom. I love meeting new people and I'm very grateful, extremely grateful for the opportunity to work at doing what I love. I really can recommend this as a vocation. Um, sometimes your time is not your own, but that's okay. You interact with people worldwide and you get to to see a little of an insight of what they're uh, trying to work with. Now, I work very closely with the Spooky2 team. They're very helpful. They're always on board for me. And whenever I've asked something, it gets uh, you know, answered immediately. So do make use of the Spooky2 team. Uh, Penny Yu is amazing in support. There are a couple of others I'd love to mention, Simi Moss, because she's incredible. Just everyone. And um, there's so many learning tools that are on board, but there are people that like one-to-one -one training. So when it comes to searching for answers, please always search for them by contacting um well, don't contact people until you've actually exhausted all resources. Try and search for your answers. And then you, then you contact the Spooky2 team. They are very busy. They're incredible staff and they never lose it. They always think you have an answer for you. Right. It's telling me to join my own meeting. So um, I'm going to just snooze that and get back to what we're learning about here. Great, let's move on to the next slide. I just want to clear something up about, given we have something in the way. So this is what we're going to be learning today. We're going to make you don't, I'll repeat that, we're going to make Spooky2 work for you. And you want to have an overview of your software. Let me just move my face out of the way so that it doesn't cover the presentation. Great. And what you need is an overview of your software. Very often you only use parts of your software. I'm not asking you to have a degree in learning software, but I do want you to get a really good idea of what it is that you're learning. And I want to explain more on each tab's context, uh, content and what you will be using the most. So firstly, the menu, and then I'll explain the tabs to you. Great. Let's just move it to the next tab. I'm just going to stop the share because I didn't want to share that last screen. Off we go and share my office screen with you. Let's just get that up and going. Good heavens, everything is kind of in the way for me to move. Let's just move this down and 
going to share a slide. So there's an overview of the software, and this is what you'll be learning. You are all familiar with this, and if you're new to Spooky, this is the free um, software that you can download until such time as you actually have Spooky on board and uh, you're running with your generators. But you can actually start learning about your software uh, in test mode. So I actually recommend to you that you go to spooky2.com and get the downloads page and work on that. But today we're discussing at the first place, the star, just want to annotate using a nice bright, well, we have the mouse tool. I'm showing you the, the file, the database, the globals and the utilities. And yes, even the credits, because there's some very hardworking people behind the scenes. And then I will be showing you um, how to know your tabs, Oops. all the presets, and the programs, all the green that I've highlighted in with arrows, and your settings, your control, your system, the internet, and errors. And interestingly enough, I teach you a little while from the, the one side errors until we get to a certain part, and then I go and teach you from presets. But firstly, the menu. So I'm going to stop the show and go straight along to, hi everyone, I see there's questions and answers coming up. We'll deal with those later and I'd very much like it if you were specific to what we're learning about. Please don't ask me a question that's unrelated. We'd like to stick with the, the actual topic. So let's just have a look and tell you what we have here. Just Penny, just for your info, we are recording. Um, let's see. We want to actually share a screen and go for straight to Spooky. And here's my Spooky screen. Great. Let's have a look and see what we have on board today. Firstly, when I show you anything, I just want to get my annotation tool going. I'm going to use a drawing feature. And you have your well-known first screen where we are. Well, we are in control at the moment, but let's go to presets. All right. And I'm using a mouse at the moment. That would be your very first screen. So the place that I want to teach firstly before we go to the tabs is to go to the menu up above. You have file, database, global, utils, which stands for utilities and credits. Let's go off to the very first one. Just gonna clear my drawings and off we go. Going to file. Now within file, the only thing, and as I said, I only relate to the pertinent items, like creating a program is that's where you find it to create programs. And we will get to maybe getting hold of a program and making it should there be sufficient time. Right. Uh, besides that, there are other items there which are for a more advanced uh, section. And obviously, this is where you exit from. Moving on to the second in the menu is database. Right. We have a database which is all selected for us. Maybe once you once in a while a refreshing of the database is a great idea so there's not too much to learning these menus but there are some pertinent features which will help you let's just go back to database and everything is selected for you but you can know exactly where you work on these again editing a biofeedback 
uh, database is a little bit more advanced, but eventually in maybe a, a following on a seminar, we can find a little more out about it. Let's move on to global. And this is one that we do use. Say I wanted to start up programs. Now I've got nothing loaded. I can start my program simultaneously, all of those um, presets, everything can be set up in one go. And then we have resume. Now, why is this a very handy feature? Well, in South Africa, what we have is a load of um, power outages. And when that happens, now in your case, it might just be that your software needed an upgrade, but you should have set your settings so that you know when you're doing it. And um, we use global resume and it takes you back to where you last were if you had anything saved. So for example, if you were doing an 11 day terrain, what you will find is that it will pick up on day five or six or wherever you left off. Right, you can also globally pause all your generators. Now that could be handy if you're moving your, your computer to a new computer and you want to just pause everything or you just needed to pause for one or other reason. That is pause and then unpausing is the favorite thing to do is where you take it off pause and it goes back mm. into unpause. We can also hold all generators. I've never had cause to use it, but I have used stop and I have used global erase, which actually will make everything be in erase mode. Let's check that by going to the control panel and seeing that everything is erased. What do we have here? We have three of the generators showing as icons, numbers three, four, and five. And number three is a deeper red than the other two, which denotes that I'm now on generator number three. Great. Let's move back now to our menu and start learning a bit more about the utilities feature. File, database, global, utilities. Great, here we go. What you're getting basically is one of my first lessons, which I teach to people who are first coming on board. Obviously there's more interaction, but as we go, let's just learn first and then we can ask questions later. And hopefully they will be related to what we're doing. All right, we're going back to utilities. And what we have here is uh, a wonderful way of checking whether your generators are installed. I won't do it now, but if you had to, um, there's obviously others that you can look at, but the most important ones are the ones I'm pointing out to you. To um, install the Spooky 2XM driver, which is the XM. That's the silver and blue baby. I'm going to pass one over and show it to you along with its boost and the remote. So there's an XM for you. Um, I won't be able to pass over my generator X because it's kind of um, short on the extensions, but that's the silver one. And there you can also install your generator X drivers. Very useful to know. Okay, now sometimes when you're trying to install something, you might find that it won't install until you have .NET, um, but we'll get to that uh, later as well. Also, rescanning devices. How wonderful is rescanning devices? I'm going to do one now. And what it does is it searches for all three generators. Now, if one was unplugged, I'm going to be a little bit naughty and just take out one of my generators, I'm going to the control, and I'm going to 
utilities, rescan devices, and it shows up only two generators. Now, what a lot of people do, and I'd like you not to do this, is to restart your computer each time. Simply check for the loose connection. In my case, I'm plugging it in. And go to utilities and rescan your devices. And it brings in all three devices. Have a look at that. All are running. So that's basically what we needed to learn, which was extra special in utilities because starting up and um, restarting your software each time is totally unnecessary. Simply go to utilities and rescan devices and everything rescans for you. Great. Let's just check a few of the messages here. Raise a hand if you can hear everything quickly, please. Right, somebody's joining from Johannesburg. That's wonderful. The screen share, yes, I can make it larger. Does that help you? There you go. I think it's got smaller actually. I think that's as large as I can make it. There you go. Hard to hear me? All right, we'll talk up a little more. And let's have a look. All panelists, thank you very much. I'm pleased to have you on board. Thanks for those raised hands. It's really important to know that you are here. Great. What we're going to do is go back to the credits, the last one, which I just briefly want to talk about. The people involved in these um, credits are amazing. They're all fantastic. They've all got some part to play in making Spooky 2 exactly what it is for you. So I'm closing that down. And without further ado, we're moving to the next, gosh, take that ring off, it makes a big bump. Um, let's go and spotlight where we need to go to. We're going along to the last tab. I refer to the next line of information from presets all the way down to errors as tabs. Ah, we have an interesting thing that happened and why did we get errors? We got errors because I unplugged my Spooky and my port number four did not respond. I know what it's about. I'm therefore going to take the broom and the cross, that little X and the broom and I'm gonna sweep it away, delete. All right, I could perhaps have shared that screenshot if I was unsure uh, down below in the screenshot share, but usually it's normally how you connect it to your, your uh, computer and or your laptop or whatever you're using. Let's go along to the next tab, which is the internet tab. You say, but Marianne, these things are simple. I don't need to learn them. It is surprisingly simple to go along to, I'm just going to put my face up in the top left corner, to go along to the forum. Please, when you join, I will not be pressing on these buttons, but I'm moving my spotlight to the uh, extreme right forum. Forum will actually teach you so much. The very learned are in there and they know quite a great deal. The Facebook page is terribly informative. The admins there are helpful. There's a YouTube section. And even besides that are videos down below. You can also go to a blog and you can actually contact anyone regarding any purchase that you need to, uh, for sales. And if you need anything specific, such as you want some support, that's a great place that you can actually find support instead of going to your browser. So remember this quick function. All of these, I'm going to just draw them. All of these 
are for your benefit. Learn about them and use them wisely. Great. The next tab, I'm now going to move across, moving my face across as well. You can be right out of the picture if you like. And we're going to presets. How much is there to know in presets? Some of this is a topic for another day, but this is where presets are found. I like to refer to presets as being the shell. Okay, like the shell empty preset, and then the program being within the shell and being carried along. So that's one way of kind of remembering the difference between a preset and a program. So let's go and have a look at the presets tab and the areas that I will show you today are as follows. Let's just get a drawing tool. Firstly, I show you that at the top, there's a C drive, Spooky 2 preset collections, everything is in. That was the last thing loaded probably. All right, then I want to show you this panel. Very easy for some of you. And I want you to note how many presets are in every time. And then we cover, oops, let's just draw it all of the bottom panel. And we learn about that just very easily on a simplified basis. Great, I'm going to clear the drawings and focus on your first issue, which is actually, let me just get a mouse, the up arrow. Up arrow takes you right up to the top to biofeedback. And then home obviously will take you back to the home screen. So for example, if you went to the next one, which is users, which looks like a little pawn on the chessboard, right? Users has a low whole lot of its own user frequencies, which you make. And if you now wanted to go up one, you'd be going back to your home menu. So, just to explain a little bit further, oops, let's just go home. And what we have is a drawing tool to help us see what we are doing. These are folders, those arrows, those side arrows denote that you have a folder. But under, say, biofeedback, you have another folder. And let's just say that's generator X, all right? And now you have the actual preset. So you make your way down. Let's make our way up again by using the up arrow and the up arrow again. Let's choose on biofeedback again and move to say Spooky Pulse. For those of you who are using the Pulse items, you know, these uh, particular items which fit over. Let me just get that out for you. The correct way to apply it is through the finger with the actual uh, cord on, up, up and over. And that gets connected directly to Spooky 2. <laughs> Oh boy, via the attachment, which you see here. This particular side of the USB will go directly into your computer. That was an aside for anyone doing their scans. And for the pulse scans, you're going to go into general and you're going to pick your particular scan. Note that half scans and quarter scans have yet another folder and they have a test as well as the two scans. So moving up one, we can go to quarter scans and you will find the test at the top and four scans coming down. I think that's marvelous. So we're going home all the way and I'm going to clear the drawings so there's no confusion. 
we're now going to discuss a little bit about this side. And then we go down to the bottom one. All right. Firstly, the top one. Let's have a look at going home and um, we have a user file that we no longer want. So, because the presets are, fortunately, you cannot delete them. It's just as well that that's the case. Going into uh, the user file, maybe there's something there that I don't want. And DH001 to 006, if I didn't want that, maybe I don't want the esophagus target grade scan. I can delete. Yes, my dear, I'd love to delete. Thank you. So we've deleted that particular user file. You cannot delete the other files, fortunately. So let's go to back to home. And just for example, you wanted to edit a user file. It's mainly for editing. I want to edit something in uh, my esophagus target grade scan. I don't, but let's pretend I do. I can call up what is known as the chain editor and it allows me to actually change items here. The topic for discussion in this particular case is not going to be discussed here. But the one thing I will tell you is if you need to edit, you will need to go onto the program itself and actually make sure that you make changes to it. But of course, this is for the more advanced. So file and exit out of that. And now um, deleting a preset is being uh, covered. We can also save a preset. I don't have anything to show you to save but let's actually make something. So we get a little involved here, but this is fun. Let's try to take a preset and chain it. That involves the bottom square to your left. So just for example, I'm very fond. We want to go home, very fond of the David Halliday frequencies. And we are instructed to use the first six, but I actually like to use the first nine because it includes a little bit more. But for the purpose of doing what we're doing, we're just going to do the six. So I go to, where do I find them? Miscellaneous. I might not know that, so I have to search around. What's a great way to find DH experimental frequencies? Let's deviate a little bit from this because here they are. And if we ran it in remote, I'm going to just clear my drawing. We would take and combine the first, let's say I like the first nine, but let's just say we're going to combine the first six. I take, triple zero one and I place it in and I do the same for the next one and I want you to note where it's going to it's going into the preset to chain in the bottom box number three is going to be put in number four I'm adding them in. I'm chaining my presets. I'm looping them together so that they all work in a chain. Now we're going to number five. And as I said, we'll just go to number six. And of course, I already have a preset for this. And mine goes to number nine because I like to oxygenize and uh, use breathing within that preset. So, what I have to do now is actually save, and I save it down below, save the currently loaded presets to a preset chain. It comes up with a menu. I don't think you'll be able to see this. I'm going to share the screen with you.
hopefully it shows. And the file name that will come up, I don't think it is showing, but in any event, preset collection user, and you would type in DH triple zero one to DH triple zero six. And we're going to run it in remote. Oops, let's just get it in remote. And we don't need anything there. And you're just going to give it an initial, like mine would be Marion Leiden. So I just put in ML and I save. Now, where will I find this? You'll find it in your user file and it will be under, you can see the DH00, rather triple zero one to triple zero six. Because I teach so often, um, I'm probably repeating the process a couple of times and uh, it's in the file and it's ready to run. Good. There is one feature that I'd like to teach you before I forget. When we go to home, there's a new feature being added and I want you to use features that actually are on a board for you that have specially been put up. And of recent, they had one that looks like this. Let's say, for example, you want to search for colds on presets. Okay, because you could do it on programs, but I'd like you to do it on presets. What we actually do is we ask for a wild card situation. So anyone that's used to computeries will know what I'm saying. We have an asterisk and we type in cold. And just for example, let's just say we only want cold. We close it off with an asterisk. And we search, but oh my word, it's so it's got so many, it's got 2,103 entries. So what we'd like to do is say, I only want the ones with remote. So I'm going to put an R in there at the top of my query bar. And I'm going to put an asterisk again, and I'm going to query it. And everything that's remote has come up. But now let's just say, let's just give it a further try. I'm not too sure if this will work, but let's give it a try. Let's see that everyone in Australia would very much like to, to know what the strains are for their cold. Maybe, <laughs> nah, it's not coming up. So perhaps it only goes to, there we go, to the cold and the remote, all right, and comes up with everything for all the colds. And you can search down for Australia and say if you're in Victoria or Brisbane, or you possibly in Sydney, you'd look up the strain and see where it is. All right, you can also pay close attention to something that a lot of you do not, is and uh, it's not um, a judgment call, it's just a case of learning something. If you want to, I just want to draw this, you can make very good notes of the fact that these presets are to be found in these folders. Spooky 2, preset collections, DNA, cold and flu. Okay, and it's telling you that it's that's the one for Australia, and it's in remote, and it's made by John White. The very last initials are the person who initiated the actual preset. So that's brilliant. We've got all of that done. Let's uh, clear all drawings and move on. Let's go to back to home. Else again. Right, and you've learned how to chain a preset. You can also, just for example, just want to explain a few more of the items. 
in the preset. Again, let's just say we're using environmental. We're going to use, uh, just for example, remote. And we want to do all of the, oh gosh, we've got bird mites and we've got household insects and we have general purpose mold and we've got more mold, oh gosh, and we've decided we've pressed Calembola by mistake. Now, oh boy, we want Calembola not to be on there. Please do not use your sweep icon. It will take everything, just everything out. Double click on Calembola and it will go back to where it was. You don't need that. But for example, we want bird mites to be right at the end. Use your arrow down key. Take it further down. And maybe we want household insects to move down. Oh boy, we took it too far. We wanted one up. And now we have those presets that we can save. I won't actually save them, but I will sweep them away. Let's sweep them away now and off we go. Great. We've got everything back uh, home. And I want to discuss the very next panel, which I'd like to annotate for you. Let's move to drawing tool again and discuss the middle panel. Let's say, for example, you're setting up a terrain protocol. Wow, let's find a fast way to type in terrain. Type it into the query bar at the top and we look for terrain. Now look at how many terrains there are. Right, where would you normally find them? Let's go home. Let's go to detox. We go to remote, for example, and we click on terrain minus mercury. Terrain not with mercury, it's terrain minus mercury. That is confirmed by the notes to the right. And I really want you to pay attention to your notes. So it tells you what the very first preset is. There you go. Very first preset. And it also tells you what the list of presets will be for each day. Those are down below. And it tells you there will be 15 even though it's an 11 day program. Very important when you are doing and setting out to do your notes, your um, terrain protocol is to actually read your notes. So important to read your notes. Guys, if you don't read your notes, you will make mistakes and you don't want to be ineffectual with this. You'd very much like to know that everything is um, up in notes. So we're going down. It tells you what the entire schedule is for terrain. Hi there. I can see your hands. We'll talk to you later. I haven't forgotten about you. Let's just see. We're at 10.31. So we have a lot of things to teach you. And coming down on this whole terrain program, the presets, are, it tells you what the day is and how you'd actually be using your contact and your um, plasma or your uh, spooky scalar. Everything is covered in here, but I want you to go right to the end where if you were doing this terrain in remote, which is the usual, it tells you connect your spooky remote to the BN port of spooky boost on generator two or to out one of generator two if you don't have a spooky boost. So it always, read your notes guys, it gives you instructions as to how to use things. 
Great, let's clear the content. And uh, let's just move on to the next uh, item. Notes is probably the last item that I want to discuss with you. That's to the far right of the three columns. So I don't even have to annotate that for you. You can see that it says that there's an estimated total runtime of 39. Well, that would apply to the very first program. It does not apply to everything, uh, the entire protocol. So it's only going to show you that terrain. Great, I'm pretty much going to remove all of this and go back to global um, utilities, rescan devices so that everything is clear. And let's see, welcome aboard everyone. It's nice having you here. And uh, from a beautiful and autumnal South Africa, just to greet you wherever you are in the world. It's a rather daunting experience to do an online because I'm used to doing one-on-ones and far easier. Um, anything you'd like to ask, we can get to. Let's just see if there's any questions. How long is this presentation? How long is a piece of string at the moment if I have to answer? Okay. Um, I'd like to answer this question live. Sana, it's going to be uh, as long as it takes to get through each of the presets and programs and whatever tabs. So let's see how we go. All right. So if any of you are quitting, that's absolutely fine. You can pick it up on record much later. The video will be available later. So for some of you, you're going off to bed now. And it's not exactly um, showing. Yes, Kathy, I'm aware that you didn't see the screen change. Just let me answer that, Kathy. Absolutely, the screen didn't change for you because it was going to take one heck of a long time to get to. Thank you. Good. I'm just going to close down those questions and move back to the presentation. Our webinar is up and going. And what we're discussing is the menu tab. We've done that. And now we're moving on to the other um, tabs, or rather the menu and then the tabs. Great, let's move on to programs. And we're going to delete whatever is in there and discuss programs with you. I move my face right out of the picture here so that you guys can actually see what's going on. Firstly, under programs, remember we are at programs. I'm just going to denote that with an arrow. And we have every single program loaded. Look where my arrow is moving to. Let's even use a spotlight that might be better. Here we have 57,152 programs. Remember I talked about the preset being the shell and the program being what carry, uh, carries everything along and they both work in tandem. So what we have is um, a query bar, which is right at the top. And let's just say we typed in or all famous one, cold. It comes up with anything related to cold. So everything is shown there. You cannot use the um, wildcard feature on this particular query, not as yet. It probably will come up. And let's say, for example, let's just clean out what we have. We want to go and put in cold one up to six. The way to get everything loaded. Let's just put my face back in view in case I'm being rude. Right. Um, shift, hold down your shift key on your keyboard 
and move to cold six and all of them will come up. You can now plus the programs in or enter. All right, plus and in they come. You could also say that perhaps you want um, to, to look for something else. Let's just say we wanted some vitamin B12. Not sure, but we're searching it in and we're going to find if there's a vitamin B12. And oh my gosh, it comes up with something that I need, some vitamin B12. And then I can double click on it. All right. Or I could plus it in. There are two ways of actually working with this. Okay. And you actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to repeat some of this. We're putting in vitamin B12 and we've added it in. Now from this point, you can actually make a, um, a program of all the programs that you wanted there. You could add on more. So for example, you wanted to make this into a program. You're going to save it, all right? This is where you create a program, but you can also do it from file, file create a program. So let's call this cold. I want to share the screen. I'm just hoping that it shares. There you go. I hope it's in because I've been trying to share these screens and we want to type in cold and we're going to um, simply type in cold and that's sufficient enough so that you know, or maybe you wanted to type in cold Marion, but let's just say, for example, we put in cold and we're very sure and we want to save it. So we're going to share again into the screen. And we have everything loaded up. How do we find our program? We find it by moving our cursor back, deleting what we have, typing in cold, and we're going to find it right down below, probably. There it is. Marion Cold. Cold is down below. We want to delete out what we have and plus in cold. Great. And you even have an encyclopedia entry for cold. Wonderful. So I want to do cold, but I've also got a cough. So I've got a preset and I also want to add or rather a, a saved program and I want to add in cough as well. I look for cough, cold coughing, add it in and off I go and use that in the future. But it would need the shell in order to run. So we'd go back to that and create a whole preset. Right, I'm going to skip settings for now. We can do, maybe we just touch on settings. Oh, I haven't actually finished with programs for you. There's more to teach in here. And the place that I'd like to teach you is this area here to your right. Let's just get the drawing tool working. And what we have, is this area. A lot of you do not use this feature and it's a marvelous feature. So what you can do is go to a particular section of it, it's just being highlighted extra dark. And I want you to use your mouse on your screens when you're doing it and minus all the ticked items out. 
and now you have absolutely zero database, nothing. If you look at your spotlight, you can see that there's absolutely nothing in the, in the database. Now, let's say, for example, we wanted to plus them all back. They're all back again. And because I've got a uh, cough highlighted, only 134 items are in highlight. Let's delete that and all programs will come back. There you go, 57,000 odd of wonderful programs that you can use. Let's, for example, find out what these programs are about. I'm going to share this. Just hope it comes up. Okay, let me know if you can't see it, but if you worked on the query bar, it would actually show you that ALT has to do with programs based on Ayurvedic knowledge and practice, the solfeggios and planetary frequencies. Then you have something like Hulda Clark, using her database, using the HC uh, prefixes there. There are so many, so do have a look at those when you can. They're very interesting and you can decide what you'd like to do. So for example, you only wanted to learn about cough. Let's just say we put in cough. And we only wanted to know about the molecular weight. We minus everything out on the right side database. I just wanna make sure that I am sharing my screen again. Apologies, I'm not sharing screen. Let's just go back on that. We have, we type in cough. And on this screen, we want to only have molecular weight. We want all the medication. And we have found that something in here works for us. So we're going to add a medication. And let's just be random about this, okay? Um, a penicillin of some sort we wanted. So once we finish, please remember to plus in all of the database again and know that you are going to be running those particular programs as and when we do that. It won't be as yet. I'm simply showing you the features. So at the moment, we're sharing the Spooky 2 screen and the drawing that I want to show you now is how the encyclopedia will come up with all the information you need. Now, an important feature that you can use is in the bottom area. Let's just apply it to that area down below. Repeating each frequency, repeating each program, the sequence. Most importantly, though, would be repeating chain. Okay. Sometimes you want to repeat a chain more than once. So we create a chain and we want it to repeat. Zero denotes that it runs in infinity. One will denote that it goes once and obviously any recurring numbers like 10 or 20 set your, your um, whole program to run that, or that chain to run that many times. You can actually physically change that. Let's just say we want it once, you're able to change that. That is the important thing that I needed to show you here. There's a couple more items I'd like to show you on the screen. Let's just clear. the drawings and we're going into say well I don't want to use medication or perhaps I want to move it to the top no I've decided I really don't want this I double click on it please do not use erase let's show you what erase does 
it takes it all away. All right, so that means inputting cold again and finding, select one, shift key down, arrow key on your keyboard down and adding it in. And because I wanted cold and coughing, because I'm coughing as well, I add that in. As I say, you can save your preset. And I think some of you might not have seen how it's saved, but it actually gets saved into your programs. I would like to repeat that save and maybe see that I can share the screen with you. So saving, I'm going to share the screen. Um, new share. There we go. And we're saving the program name to Marianne's Cold. Oh. Doesn't want to capitalize today. Marianne's Cold, because I want it to stand out. I want to see what it's about. In here are all your frequencies. You can see that. And I save it. It asks me if I'm sure. And I say, yes, I'm sure. I want to say that. Good. Let's stop that share and go back to the main screen. Hi, everyone. This is your presenter. Trying not to mess up with this too much because I'm unused to showing people worldwide when it comes to doing presentations. But let's just carry on and do exactly what I can do with it. Great. So. Moving on to what can be done here. I maybe want coughing, cold coughing, to be, to be done right at the top. And maybe I don't want number six. Just for some reason, my program is too long. Let's show you a little bit about how long the program is. Uh, let's go to my annotation tool and choose where I want to show you the estimated total runtime is down below. If I add yet another uh, cold six, I plus that in, it's moved to six hours and 17 minutes of, of programming, which is quite a long thing to do. But let's just see how we go on that. So basically you have the delete everything tool, the save which we've done, and the movement of every feature, say we want coughing right down below, or we decide we want one up in there, that's where it would be. Let's put it down below again, because it looks neat and tidy. Great. Moving on now to your next um, tab would be settings. In settings, I'm not going to explain too much because Spooky has been kind enough to actually put everything in, in a preset way. Do I want to have somebody on or something on to notify me when zero? Absolutely. Couple of things I'll show you here is where your waves run. At the moment, in the middle, you have a UDB square and an inverse as a default. If you were to hit um, one, you would see that the waveform on the right changes to wave, a uh, sine wave. The next wave would be a square and so forth. The one thing I can teach you here which is of interest to beginners, is to ensure that something runs for a certain amount of hours. In this case, sometimes the default is, is set to zero, but let's just say I wanted to run something for 24 hours. I know the preset, I know the program, and I'm going to be running it for that amount of time. It's just that type of preset that I would use. Basically, everything else here is more advanced and for future training. 
let's move to the system panel before we move to control. System panel, very important. When you look at your own screen, I'd like you to make sure that you are displaying the port number. Why? Because it will actually display the port number on your generator X. So you will know which port number is which. Give high CPU priority. Let's just get the annotation tool cleared and show you where I mean. Use a tool that you can all see. We're working with the general settings here. All right, to your left. We're displaying the port number. We're giving it high priority. And we're showing the internet tab. Now that's an optional. You don't have to have the internet tab in. But what you might like to do to load faster is to actually have the encyclopedia switched off. Then your database loads up much quicker. It really does. There are two items which I'd like you to check that are not in red. Sometimes I find that a couple of my people that I'm training actually have these frequencies in the square in red. If that's the case, please go back to the downloads page and download everything. Restart and you will probably get those back up in a nice black color, which is what they should be. They're quite important because they are custom database and your biofeedback frequencies. Great, I like my encyclopedia on, so I'm going to check it once more. And I'm going to make sure that all of these checks are actually in. If you want to know what anything means, put your cursor over the arrow and you will find bubble help. It will help you. For example, let's look at a high CPU priority. It says, set Spooky to run at high CPU priority, central processing unit on your system. It may not work for all operating systems, but it certainly works um, on most of the more modern computers. So you can tell Paul that he's your person of the day in terms of telling you what to do, or perhaps you'd like to keep that all quiet while you're learning. But sometimes, let's just annotate where I am with the spotlight, coming down to the skin. Gosh, keep it as it is for now, it's a nice skin. That means the overall setup and layout. The font size works beautifully. Some of you are telling me that my fonts are a bit small. Perhaps I can change it to an 11, but it tends to change back again. So there's a much bigger font. And let's choose um, to have Mike or Paul back. Let's get... Hey, Paul, good to meet you. Thank you for your assistance. So um, let's clear the drawings and move now to a couple of things that you can know about in this particular side of matters. What I'd like to introduce now is the use of Pulse, which a lot of you are using on your XM generators. You can also use it on generators. Then you switch mine in and it will turn green because I'd like to show you on this tab exactly what is possible. Just going to hold that down a little. We're going to plug in my finger pulse. You can also use an ear pulse. I'm putting my index finger or the middle finger into, let's just do that on first finger, shall we? And it runs over the finger and it picks up and it is not reading at the moment. Now, what a lot of people do is they actually restart their computers. That's not necessary. I want you to have a look at my drawing. 
and have a look at connected hardware. At the moment, COM3 and I think COM4 and 5 are available. Now we want to actually register the pulse. Now, a lot of you, as I say, will restart. That's unnecessary. I want you to go to glow, um, utilities and rescan devices. What has happened is it's picking up beautifully. It's showing the pulse as registering. And it's showing that it's been detected in my connected hardware. So there it is. It's up and going. Spooky pulse is detected. So guys, no need to restart your computer each time. You find that rescan utilities, rescan devices will work beautifully for you. It's going to unplug that. The moment I do unplug it and I rescan now, utilities, rescan devices, it no longer shows. And you know that, but it's just a great way of showing you how it works. Everything else pretty much in this particular page, this particular tab is not really of much note because they are preset for you. So let's move to one of the most important ones. And the last in the tabs is the control panel. The encyclopedia is busy reloading because I reloaded it. But in any event, we're going to discuss each of these panels, but exclude biofeedback. We're now on about an hour, so we might stick to questions in the next few uh, minutes. Once I've taught the control panel, we'll get to the questions. Thank you for being on board. We've got a nice response. I can see that. It's um, really nice to be heard because this is something very close to my heart. We're moving to generator number three. Note that it is deeper red and there's nothing loaded in it at all. How do we know we're on generator three? Have a look at my drawing. Let me show you that we're on generator three because it's denoting it at the top. Should we move to generator four? That is what we'd show, as would number five. So you know which gen you're on. Go back to three, and that is what shows what is going on. Great. The estimated, the, the areas that I'd like to show you are overwrite generator, um, and running the generator. In order to do that, we need to start a preset. So let me start a preset up. We go back to presets and control will become more evident. The control tab becomes more evident when I actually show that to you. And we're going to put in a healing preset and we're looking for remote. And we just want to put in um, uh, let's just say the Schumann resonator, an easy one. We read up on how it's, oops. I'm recording at the moment, but my share screen has stopped. Let's go back to Spooky. All right. We're on the presets. And we're looking for remote. And we're looking for Schumann resonator. We've already got this loaded. We go to programs and we also want to load something for our very bad bronchitis. We add it in. We want it to run once. So it's showing a correct once only. In the settings, we may just want to run this for 24 hours, that overwrites any other instruction. We go to control, and we all know the famous words, overwrite generator. 
go to generator number three, your Schumann loads, plus all the bronchitis programs load, and you press start. It loads the waveforms, and your generator has turned green. One, wonderful. Seem to have lost you guys. We're going to repeat that. Presets, Schumann resonator, programs. We're adding the uh, bronchitis. Just say bronchitis two. Settings. We're running it for 24 hours this time. You don't always have to remember the setting. This is just a nice fun one to add to whatever you're doing. Control, overwrite generator, and let's put it on number four because I really need to work at things. You wouldn't do this, but just as a, a way of showing you how to do something. All right, and we press start. Generator three is on an amplitude wobble and that was showing in a blue. We don't want that, we want it to actually run. Let's show you a couple of extra features. For example, on number three, we only, we've decided, whoa, we only want to run it once. We press on the little button, and I'm going to annotate this. Let's get the drawing tool. I'm going to press on the button beside stop. All right, press on it. And what happens to our generator? It turns a deeper blue. That denotes, and I'm going to take it back again, oops, um, that you're going to stop this generator after it's completed the program or current program loop, because other generators will not be affected by what you do with that. So you could stop it after it's run its course, its full course. Right. Generator number four is up and going and it's got different programs running. Generator five is on stop. What does pause look like when it's in pause? pause the generator, it goes to a yellowy mustard color. Now, if we were to, we like a particular frequency and we want to put it on hold, we put it on hold and it turns a strange color. We unhold it and the amplitude wobble will give it yet another color. We take that off and the frequency wobble hardly ever used, both amplitude and frequency wobble, actually change what happens, goes to a pink. Let's take that out and show you a couple more things. So the very first item I would teach here is the square. Oh, it overshot where it needed to go. There you go. That particular square is what I want to teach. The mouse goes to overwrite generator and selects three and tells you that you're on Schumann resonator, remote mode made by Jeff Kaskill. Can't say that surname, but we give it a try. Right, then we go to number four. And we have a look at what's on number four. But for some reason, we don't want it on number four. We want to change it to generator number five. Here's your chance to try overwriting something. Override generator. And you take number fours and you put them onto number five. And you press start. All three generators are giving me a nice calm frequency and helping with uh, a supposed cough or bronchitis. Great. I'm going to grab a little bit of water here. Down below is something 
which you will see as VG not percent. That stands for virtual generator. Let's click on that generator. And there's absolutely nothing in it. Let's go all the way back to presets and try and load a program. Going to presets. We're going home. And we want to uh, do a shell empty preset. There's that shell. I'm going to add something to it. And we want to do it in remote, possibly. And we're looking to kill something. We've decided it's time to kill. And I like the dual. It's a recent addition. I'm just going to stop the uh, drawings just so you don't get confused. And you have a killing in dual in remote and it's loaded. You can see it's loaded in the presets, chains, middle column, and it tells you connect your Spooky 2 remote to the BN port of Spooky 2. The BN port, if I can show you, take one loose. Some of you do not understand the BN port relates to BioNor or as one of our trainers said, south. Magnetic north is on one side, bio north is on the other. So as Spooky 2 faces you, you have two which get plugged in. Now you want to actually use the bio north. Bio north is to the left. And to the right, it will probably be the wrong way around for you is on the other side. You're going to use BN, the BN port. If you have a look at your actual equipment, you can see it's marked BN and it's out. Oops, let's just have a look, it's out too. All right, so BN actually runs to that side. Your high power port is the second one. Your colloidal port, is the third one. Those are the ones that you most use. Great, let's just put that down and not bother with it at the moment because I've finished instructing on that. We're using Killing Dual. We want to get our programs and we're very interested in using our biofeedback. Let's go and find some biofeedback quickly. A quick way to do that is to type in BFB and look for it. And we're going to look for our latest BFB and look at it. Uh, I did a grade scan. So I'm going to use a biofeedback scan from a little while back. Control, overwrite generator. Oh boy, I have a problem. All generators are blocked. What can I do? I write it to my virtual generator. This is something new. You put it in. Did we choose our programs? I don't think we did. Let's plus it in. Go to the control, overwrite, and put it in the placeholder. The virtual generator is just a placeholder. It doesn't run frequencies. So you can actually place them in, and you do not start it. You wait for a generator to stop. You overwrite and you place it into number five. Overwrite, you go to virtual generator, overwrite and you go to number five and it loads up into an actual generator, which in my case is a generator X. Let's continue with the next column that you're interested in knowing about all my items down so I can show you. Oops. Start that one on generator five. All right, it started a little bit late um, because of my cursor, but it, should, it normally starts on the first frequency. Where do you find your first frequency? It's in blue at the top. And it's on biofeedback, Marion General Biofeedback Scan. Okay, so I want to pause this generator. 
What color did it turn? It went to a yellow, like a mustardy color for some. Now I want to unpause it. Maybe that particular frequency was great for me. So I hold the frequency because I can feel it. That might happen in contact mode where you like the frequency, you feel that it has benefit, you want to hold it. You can unhold it as well. Right, let's move on to what is happening in this particular square. Drawing. Gosh, these things keep moving down, but let's just leave them as they are. Kind of interferes. Let's move this whole thing over and then I can get to the drawing. There we go. This area here has been discussed quite well. Not fully, but because the amplitude wobble, we could uh, you could try it on your own. But don't hold it in wobble too long. What will happen is that the amplitude on the right-hand side and the generator output will actually wobble. And if you did a frequency wobble, it would uh, wobble the frequencies. All right, so that's basically what you have to know there. In terms of what we now wish to discuss, I'm not discussing biofeedback, which is all the grade area underneath. That is for another lesson. Then, I want to talk about the estimated runtime. Just get an annotation tool. Estimated runtime is shown here. At the moment, it says 15 minutes is going to be running for. All right, that's basically all you need to know. Which generator is it using? It's using this silver generator. That's also another way of knowing which generator you're on. The frequencies that are running, that hopped because of um, other bars being in the way, I've stopped it. So stop the whole thing. Go to generator five and start again. What needs discussion now is if we could just get these guys to do annotation tools that were faster. The dwell time. Look at dwell, step, preset, age factor. The ones that I'm concerned with is dwell. You have a power outage and or you want to stop your generators. You make a note of the step that it was on, even the dwell time if you wish, and whether there was one or more presets, because sometimes there might be more than one preset. And you note where it was on a piece of paper. And obviously the generators would have stopped. Right? Just clear the drawings. It stops, but you want to resume everything. Now have a look at this. What might happen is your virtual generator will come into play as well, but you can utilities, rescan devices, and it will go back to the place that you were last at. Unfortunately, it also loads the virtual generator. So you will find that that is what happens when it runs the virtual generator. You're going back to Spooky and everything is loaded back again and it will start up once more. So it will find the placeholder of what was there last and run your generator for you. If it was in the process of running quite a few things, it will run again. All right, thank you everyone. Hope you enjoyed that program and see you sometime. Goodbye.